Hi, hi, welcome to Karayo. So in this episode of our Lead Code series, we are going to solve the seventh question in the Lead Code problems, which is reverse integer. So let us first read this question and develop an algorithm to solve this question and later go to Lead Code and code this algorithm. Given a 32-bit integer x, return x with its digits reversed. Obviously, as simple as that. But there are obviously certain conditions that I cannot give because it's a lead code problem. Right? So if reversing x causes the value to go outside the signed 32-bit integer range, which is minus 2 power 31 to 2 power 31 minus 1, then return 0. Assume the environment does not allow you to store 64-bit environment signed or unsigned. Okay. So we are given a 32-bit signed integer. So what does that mean? It means that we have both positive numbers as well as negative numbers. So that is our first inference. And we would have to find the reverse of this number and return that number as the answer. But that is a catch. If in case reversing that number goes beyond the range of the integer, what if it goes beyond 2 power 31 minus 1 or it goes beyond minus 2 power 31. If it exceeds this range, then in that case we should return 0 instead of the reverse number okay because obviously by reversing that integer we are assuming that it does not allow 64 bit integers and hence we should return 0 so this is going to be a straightforward reversing approach but with a catch of checking whether it is going beyond the range so that is exactly what we are going to do so moving on to the example so obviously this is the simpler version of the exact question given a sign 32 bit number x we have to return the reverse of it okay for example let us take 120 so with this number 120 given as input what should be our output it should be obviously the reverse of it 0 to 1 but does 0 have a value of course not right so 21 is just the output here and similarly let's take another input minus 123 as we saw it can include sign numbers which means both positive as well as negative numbers and hence minus 123 is also another input that we have so the output that we will get is minus 3 to 1 so if the initial input that was given to us is negative then the reverse number will also be negative so initial number is positive then the reverse number will also be positive so what we are going to do is we are going to use the exact logic that you would use for normal reversing an integer okay but in order to store this negative numbers we'll have a flag variable storing this number is whether positive or negative because our while loop condition would be while the number is greater than zero repeat the set of processes right we'll use the modulo 10 approach in order to find each digit and we'll be adding it up in order to find the reverse number but for that condition we'll be using the condition as while our number is greater than zero but since every negative number is uh, less than 0 that condition would never be reached so in order to meet with that we'll store this negative or we'll store uh, this information of whether the number is negative or not in a boolean flag variable and later at the end of this uh, solution we'll all again uh, make this into a negative number if it were a negative number okay so our first step would be to change this minus 123 into 123 for that we can use the absolute method but in case if we got an input like this which is a very big number and the reversing uh, of this number would result in a number that is greater than 2 power 31 minus 1 since it is greater than that range our output would be 0 so these are the sample test cases so let us develop an algorithm in order to solve this question. First, as we saw, we'll store the sign bit of whether the number is uh, negative or not. Later, we'll take the absolute value of the given input. In this case, if it were minus 123, we'll make it 123. Now, in this 123, we'll take digit by digit or bit by bit of each of these uh, bits in these numbers and then will make the reverse of it so how do we do that we usually do that based on modulo 10 concept what is that if given a number like 123 
when we do modulo 10 or we divide by 10 and get the remainder out of it. In that case, we always get the last bit. That is the logic that we usually use in order to get the reversing of a number. So 123 modulo 10, what is that? When we divide by 10, what is the remainder we would get? 10 into 12 would give us 120. So the remainder would be 3. And as we can see here, 3 is the last bit of this given number, right? So this is the logic that we are going to use. So we got 3, but how do we move back to 2? The number is still 123, right? So after an iteration, we would have to eliminate the last bit. How do we do that? We divide the number by 10. So initially we had 123, we got 3 by using the modulo 10 approach. Now we'll divide the number 123 by 10. So we would get the value 12. Now again repeat the process of modulo 10. So 12 modulo 10 would give us the answer as 2. So 2 would be the last bit of the number 12 and hence again repeating the process would give us 3, 2, 1 respectively. So this is the usually uh, logic that we use in order to reverse a number and that is exactly what we are going to do here. But we are just going to add a condition to check whether the given number is over the range of the integer. So that is an extra condition that we are going to add but it's essentially a reversing a number. Now let's code this logic. First as we saw let's create a boolean variable flag or let's name it sign which is going to store a sign of this value. Initially, let's have it to be true, true representing that the value is positive. But in case if the given value, which is x in this case, if the given value is less than 0, then it means it's negative, right? In that case, we'll make the sign bit as false. So that is going to be our first step. So with that out of the way, let's first make this x a positive number so that we can apply the while loop with the condition while x greater than 0. So, for making this a positive number, let's use the default function as the absolute function that is present in the math library. So, how do we do that? x is equal to math.abs of x. So, this absolute method takes an integer as an input, removes all the sign that is present here and returns only the absolute magnitude or the value that is present here. So, if we input minus 123, it would return as 123. If we input 123, it will again input 123 as the output for us. Okay. So, with that out of the way, now let's get to reversing the number. So, in order to store the reverse of the number, let's declare a number called reverse itself. So, int reverse. But, we'll deal with the variable data type of reverse at a later point. But, initially, let's code. How usually we'll code a reversing an integer question. Uh, so, while x is greater than 0, what we would do? We would first find the uh, value of the reminder, that is what you would get if you uh, divide the number by 10, what you would get as the reminder. So, in order to find that, obviously we are going to do x modulo 10 and that is going to give us the answer of what is the last bit of the given number. But where do we have to store it? We would have to store it in our reverse variable, right? But can we directly store that, can we directly say that reverse plus equal to x modulo 10? Does it work that way? If we do this as the program, we would get the numbers added up. For example, if we input 133, 123, that is 1, 2, 3, we would get the output as 1 plus 2 plus 3 which is sum of the digits and not reversing the digits, right? So, what do we have to do is, we would have to multiply the number each and every time by 10 before adding this number. So, why do we do that? Let us like to understand that. So, we have 12. Modulo 10 would give us 2. So, the reverse of 12 is obviously 21, right? So, what do we do? After the first iteration, we multiply the given result that we have. Reverse is 2, right? We multiply 2 by 10. We get 20. And now, we add the remainder that we have, which is 1, right? So, 20 plus 1 would give us 21. So, after each iteration, we would have to multiply those numbers by 10 before adding the remainder of that uh, value. 
in order to do this we would have to have a condition or a expression added to this so what we are doing here is we are multiplying the already existing value of reverse by 10 so that the digit gets moved so initially 2 was in the zeros position now it has moved in order to the ones position it has moved to the 10th position and the next iteration if it were 21 it would move to 210 plus 3 which is 213 something like that okay so this is what we are doing we are moving the position of these bits one digit at a time so that we get the reverse of this number so reverse is equal to the already existing value into 10 plus the remainder that we would get so after each iteration we would have to divide this value by 10 so x is equal to x divided by 10 so that we remove the last bit because it is already included in our reverse and this is where we would have to have a condition if our reverse value is greater than integer dot max value in that case we would have to return zero this as we saw if the reverse value was greater than integer dot max we would have to return zero but we are storing this value return, uh, reverse as an integer so obviously it would ob always be less than integer dot max right it ca uh, an integer cannot store a value that is greater than its maximum value so this cannot be an integer and hence this must be a long value so that we can check this condition okay so with that this is gonna be the while loop that is gonna give us the reverse of the number so if uh, the condition that we are gonna check is sign value is equal to equal to false in that case we know our number is a negative number hence we should return the reverse number also as a negative number so minus one times reverse okay but as we know reverse is a long data type here but our integer our return type is of integer and hence we should explicitly convert this into an integer before returning okay so with that we are gonna return our ref here but also again explicitly converting it into an integer before returning so let me sum up here first we have a sign bit which shows whether the number is of uh, positive or negative now we are finding the absolute value of it and doing the usual reversing a digit approach using modulo 10 approach and then we are adding an extra condition here checking that whether the reverse number is greater than integer dot max value if it is greater than integer dot max value we are going to return zero as stated in the question and if it's not after the end of this while loop we would have the reverse of the given number in the variable stored as rev now what we are going to do we are going to return this reverse number but we have to check if the uh, original number is a negative number then our answer should also be negative to make the number negative we are multiplying it by minus one and if in case it was a positive number this condition would have failed then you just return the number itself since we are using a long value here we are making explicitly int it into a integer now let's have a default value as zero set now let's run this code and verify whether does it work properly so it has worked for the basic test cases here now let's submit the code and check whether the code works for all the other test cases which includes very big numbers as well yeah the code has successfully executed so this is the question named reverse integers of lead code if you love this video please drop a like and comment down below if you have any queries and to, to not miss out on any future contents of lead code solutions please consider subscribing to Codago. see you in the next episode of Codago. until then bye bye